couple of questions here. We grouped into one. First of all, wild, wild westy. <laughs> Should have been wiki, wiki, wild, wild westy. Uh, hi, gents. It feels like we're heading towards a gaming tech performance plateau. Skyrocketing van prices, uh, 50 series refresh cancellation rumors, a void from NVIDIA on feature releases after the previous progress with DLSS, ray reconstruction, etc. And of course, a new Steam machine with just eight gigs of RAM. Linking that to last week's Witcher chat, if CDPR are aiming at a six-year trilogy timeline and building up the foundations up front with engine and assets to be reused, and if Witcher 4 releases at the end of this console generation, doesn't that mean Witcher 6 will be current gen shaped even halfway into the next gen? Despite the gloomy sounding speculation, is this a rare moment for budget gamers to rejoice? Maybe sitting on AM4-based rigs with optimized settings could see us well up to the PS7 era. Wow. Um, this one from uh, Alexander Zianov. Hello, exclamation pointers. <laughs> Do you think PS6 will start an era of double cross-gen with games oh, no. being simultaneously released for PS4, PS5, and PS6? Cheers, exclamation point. Um, interesting question here, Alex. It is basically, I mean, I did an article about it the other day on the, the digitalfoundry.net website, which is, you know, p- potentially there is a kind of, um, well, maybe calling it a dark age is an exaggeration, but certainly we're looking at more games having to be made playable across more devices than ever before. Yeah, I think um, an aspect of this that isn't, completely uh, mentioned is the fact that maybe uh, the next generation consoles will be delayed as well right. as a part of this, not just that there's going to be a certain stagnation of PC hardware releases, but that will also affect the, the console manufacturers, which might be possibly a thing that will happen because when you look at the price of RAM and you try and imagine if someone as big as Nvidia is not allocating to gaming or AMD is not allocating to gaming like they pre- previously could, why would Microsoft and Sony have that allocation? Uh, maybe they wouldn't, maybe they wouldn't. So that, that's another part of this. So maybe the uh, going into PS6 next gen is actually, we're talking about more years in the future than this person, both Wild Wild Westy and Alexander here uh, may, may be thinking of. But in general, I think this is going to be the shape of things anyways, regardless of the, the RAM crisis, just due to the market size and the, the cost of getting into the, the hobby anyway. You know, it hasn't gone markedly down for a while now. And to keep the, the there's only going to be X million amount of PS6 users, uh, about, you know, one to two years into its lifespan, even three to four years into its lifespan. And you're going to need to recoup costs for your, you know, super half billion <laughs> US dollar budget game. Uh, you're going to need to, re- to release to previous generation owners with the PS5 and Xbox Series X. And I don't think that, I think that I expected that for a long time anyway. And I think that's what everyone should expect, excluding a couple of releases and who, what they will be. I cannot tell you because they haven't been announced yet, probably. Or maybe it's that Star Wars game that we just saw earlier today. Right, uh, Oliver? Um, uh, other than that, I, I don't think we're going to see many PS4 releases by the time PS6 comes out. I really hope not. The only one I can think that would even venture it would be Call of Duty, to be honest with you. I think Call of Duty could do it. But everyone else, I think, will be long past PS4. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I mean, I am wondering at what point <laughs> the Call of Duty franchise will give up on PS4 support mm-hmm. uh, because it seems to be like almost baked into the engine that there is that level of scalability right. there. Um, I think from my perspective, uh, going to Alexander's point here, um, I don't think PS4 will persist. I think it is, you know, it's sunsetting, I think. I think it is the end of the, the, end of the road for there. But I think, you know, when you look at PS5 onwards, you've got, you know, you've got a, a, a reasonable CPU. You've got excellent storage, which I don't think has been still fully utilized. You've got a decent GPU. Graphics are scalable. So, yes, I can see that becoming like an entry level. Uh, I think the RAM situation on Series S could prove problematic, along with the fact that Series S, uh, sorry, just Series in general, just seems to be sort of, well, let's face facts, there does seem to be a sense that it's winding down. Um, but, you know, PS5, I think, will serve as a baseline, maybe Steam Machine as well. Um, yeah. Uh, Oliver, thoughts? 
yeah, well, I can report uh, perhaps to our excitement and merriment that Next Generation's Call of Duty <laughs> title has been reported okay. as not being on Last Generation oh, consoles. Wow. Mm. So after five years, they're finally getting around to it, which is pretty remarkable, that latency there. Um, in terms of The Witcher 4, I think whatever content decisions they make for The Witcher 4 are probably likely to influence Witchers 5 and 6, especially if those are really three-year projects as described, because they're going to make all kinds of choices and assets in like how, how fast do you traverse the environment, how does streaming look like, how are things chunked, things like this that are probably going to be anchored to current generation specs. So I suspect it's, it's going to be a lot easier to scale that stuff up than it is going to be to redo it, especially if they like reuse the same open world between games or substantial parts of the open world mm. between, between games. That would be an element where it's like really... I mean, in how are you not anchored <laughs> to the last gen specs if it's the same world? I mean, in, in, in a real sense, you know, you are anchored to that. Um, but I wouldn't count out the idea that, I mean, I suspect, I strongly suspect Witcher 4 will be cross-gen. I think Witcher 5 may be cross-gen as well. Who knows, <laughs> maybe even Witcher 6. I, it's, it's, it's really hard to say at this point. So th th those could be anchored to the last generation systems in, in more ways than one there. In terms of PS4, PS5, and PS6 cross-generation games, uh, it is tantalizing to imagine a PS4, PS5, PS6 <laughs> three-way head-to-head, but I think it'll only really apply to like very popular live service games. Like I could see Fortnite continuing to maintain, hmm. you know, a PS4, PS5, PS6 version. I could also see like, you know, Final Fantasy 14 or something con continuing to support the PS4 code at the same time as shipping like a native PS6 app. I could expect that probably not for very long, but I could see that happening because there is still a substantial base of players who are just, just cost constrained and, and just play like free to play games on those older systems. Mm. Yeah, going back to AM4, I mean, point is that if you put an x3d processor into one of those systems then basically you're you're basically producing like up to double the the cpu performance of a ps5 uh so yes that will persist for quite some time until such point as you know there does seem to be a bit more of a moving target in terms of pc performance than there is on consoles but you know i still think that will probably persist for quite some time in fact i'd love to basically uh, go back to because i've got an original um uh, Ryzen 1000 system mm -hmm. somewhere in storage. I'd love to just put an X3D processor in there and, and a new GPU to see what happens right. um, and how good it actually is. Because there are certain limitations with those older systems. Um, I guess principally lack of PCIe 4.0 support on, on those earlier boards. But, you know, um, I think AM4 probably one of the biggest success stories in the PC gaming space for quite some time and the longevity of it and the genius of X3D. I think X3D for that platform has been like, um, uh, in terms of like, you know, sustainability, in terms of like uh, longevity, it's, it's just been borderline miraculous. Yeah. And it's just been brilliant as well for, the, for it to actually become a staple part of the lineup, you know, just pushing performance on to that to that sort of next level. Um, yeah, so I think AM4 will, will probably be all right for um, uh, next gen. I mean, obviously, it probably won't be up there with Zen 6, but, you know, but, you know, running at 30, who knows? You know, who knows at this point? Uh, fascinating story, uh, fascinating um, uh, question as well. But, yes, I do think it is fundamentally going to be, as we've said in the past, one of the longest cross-gen periods we've ever seen. Mm -hmm.